and flick it that way. <laughs> it's good fun, isn't it? Hello everybody, welcome to Chaz Drake on Media and welcome to another episode of Gran Turismo 4. What you look at here is the amazing Nissan R32 Skyline GTR that we bought last time for the Japanese 80s festival. We're going to do a quick oil change to it and that's going to be it. We're just going to take the car out and try and race it, see what we can get out of it in this 80s festival in this episode. Really looking forward to this because I've finally got an R32 Skyline GTR. I love the things. I say finally like we're, you know, more than 20 episodes in. We're really not that far through the game, but still, I'm dead excited to have one of these things already. It was only like 15 grand. Might change the wheels on it, you know. Can we put a wing on it and all? Might play about with this a bit. I don't know if I want to ruin it. I don't think it's worth ruining with a big wing, is it? No, I like the standard wing. We're going to change the wheels, though. Who should we go to? Let's try some speed lines on it. Can you not change the size? They look quite nice, don't they? I don't know. The wheels that it's got on it are quite good already, aren't they? Is it Ray's that'll do some good ones? Ray's engineering wheels will be good, won't they? Oh yeah, look at them. <sighs> TE37s, aren't they? Or is it them? Just wish you could get them a bit bigger. No, they don't look big enough. The standard wheels are quite small, actually, aren't they? Stuff it, I'm getting them. I'm getting them. Do we get them or them? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, we'll get them. Okay, let's do the actual oil change now. Get that sorted. That should give us a little bit more power. Let's speed this up, shall we? Ding. Okay. So I think it said that it had 279 horsepower in the garage just a moment ago. We'll see whether that makes any sort of difference. Because it depends on what screen you're on as to what power it seems to have, which is weird. So let's go back. Back to home. 308 horsepower. Wow. Okay, cool. Um, if you'll notice as well, we've now got 10% game completion on 150 days. That's not bad at all, is it? Let's head straight over to Japan, though. Let's not waste any time here. And let's go to the 80s festival. Unmodified. That's important. So we've got El Capitan, Special Stage Route 5, Tsukuba, Apricot Hill, and Suzuka. El Capitan should be good. Let's put this car through its paces. It's important to remember as well to turn the driving aids off. There's no way to do that as sort of default in the game, which is a bit annoying. But still, that's fine. You've got to do it per car. Let's crank these down. What was that? It's a birthday card from my mum. I can tell it's my mum because it's her handwriting. No, you're not looking at my address. An amazing human was born on this day. I think they've sent it to the wrong person. You've not left the price on it, Mom. I'm proud of you. To Charles Edward. Yes, that's my full name. I remember it well. I was there. <laughs> All our love, Mom and Lawrence and Bosco. She does a sad face on Bosco every time. Oh, it's not going to focus. But thanks, Mom. Birthday card is now in the video. I can't put it anywhere where it'll be in shot. I can't put it on my head or anything, can I? Some good noises going on here. Very good looking grid, but I think we are going to absolutely... Listen to that. We are going to spank these lot. If they don't do... Whoa, that. Oh, yeah. Hey, I tell you what, that thing's going quick. It's fast, that, whatever that is. Is that Sylvia? The revs of the skyline, though, it sounds amazing. Rev into 8,000. Oh, I knew it would be a bit risky going on all that dirt there, but not that risky. Oh, this sounds so good. On standard exhaust as well, it's going to sound mint when we put a proper one on it. It's going to be a lot more raspy and a lot more growly. Love this part of the circuit. So terrifying though. Oh my god, it's bumpy. And... Uh, I lifted a long time before the apex of that corner and it still only just made it. However, I'm buzzing. It's my birthday, and I've just got a Skyline. And it's a GTR, and it's a proper one as well. It's a 32, and it's dead good, and it's mine. Oh, understeer on understeer. Oh, I forgot, it's a much faster corner than that. It's fine, though. We've got seven seconds over the Sylvia. Sorry. Made a bit of a mess there. Oh, <laughs> You've got to be committed over that part of the circuit, I tell you. Okay, so that is lap number one in the books. Three laps as well, this race, so it's a bit of a longer one. It's a bit more of a special event. That is fast to risk just lifting through there the first time. Yeah, I said we we're going to spank these, and we absolutely are, but 
We wanted to make sure we had a car that was fast enough to win this. So buzzy to have a skyline though. It may not mean much to some of you, you know, it's only a skyline in a game. Oh god, why was I still accelerating there? But it's just cool to have one legitimately. This section's always so cool. Can I stay flat? No. With a big lift, we just avoided an accident. I'm gonna tap the brakes around here just to play it safe. Don't need to push it, we're clearly a lot faster than the AI here. So, we're all good. This may be another one of those series where we do head out away from all the AI and just drive off into the distance, but it's progress at the end of the day. It's part of how you beat the game. Sometimes you will have cars that are that much faster. All we've done is give this thing an oil change and it is monstrously quicker than the other cars around it. <laughs> it's just so good around there. Listen to the revs, man. I love the noise of it. The big tss from the turbo. We'll just lift and listen. That wastegate noise, excellent. It handles really well as well. Obviously, they were four-wheel drive, the R32 GTRs. It just does everything right. It's a little bit of a straight liner on the brakes, but that's fine. It's a road car at the end of the day. Oh, a bit of backfire there to go with it as well. Again, over this section, just... Oh, that was beautiful, wasn't it? That was really, really well done, if I do say so myself. Pat on the back for you, Chaz. Happy birthday. Oh. Those downshifts are brutal. We're going to be about half a minute ahead by the end of the race here. It's embarrassing. Considering that Sylvia looked so fast in the opening moments as well. Just driven off. There's a little pop and bang there. Oh, got in a little bit hot that time. Bounced off the invisible wall slightly. I'm intrigued to see if any of the sort of top-end racing series take us to this circuit because I imagine this sort of track in a race car against the AI going as hard as possible will be pretty dodgy. It was just 29.3 seconds a moment ago to the car behind. Is it going to be half a minute? We won't find out because it doesn't tell you any further gap than 15 seconds. Well, that is a dominant victory for the Skyline. Sure, only 23 A-spec points, but still stuff them. See, earlier it said 308 horsepower in the garage, I'm pretty sure. That says 304. This will be a good combination. We go to Clubman Stage Route 5. This will be brilliant. Let's have a look at the grid. So we go up against an R31 Skyline, a Nissan Silvia again, Honda Ballard Sports CRX. I'm intrigued to see what sort of car we win, actually, for winning this championship. It's quite a long one at five races apiece and longer races each time as well. We know that we've got a substantial advantage over a lot of the cars around us, so we don't really need to push too hard, especially with five laps on the cards as well. It handles so well that I'm just sort of turning it into the apex. Yeah, we're going to send it down the inside of the MR2 here. Down into second gear, park it on the apex, or run wide of the apex, and then use long second gear down the inside of the R31. Around the CRX, down the inside of the CRX. Excuse me. Squeeze through there. Oh, just bounced off the wall a little bit. Understeering power. So fast. Excuse me. I'm really enjoying myself. Oh, okay. Really enjoying myself, and I can tell naturally that I'm just I'm smacking these paddles when we go up gears. I do wish I was using a shifter. I think that would be the only way I'd get a bit more immersion out of it. Ah. Uh, but it is what it is. But yep, we're chasing the A86 for the race lead. Gonna try and get a slingshot off the corner here. Oh, I've gone too early. It's fine, we've still got a run though. Because this thing is just rapid. Look at it go. I always forget how tight that first corner is on this reverse layout. I keep thinking it's just 90 degrees, it's actually more than that. Oh, wall there. Oh, I'm being brave. Or stupid, probably a bit of both. Uh Listen to that in the tunnel. It's so good. Again, just the way that Gran Turismo gets you to sort of appreciate every road car and sort of form a relationship with it. It's just great. 
really does make me appreciate this skyline in a game as old as this. Again, a bit that inside wall. I hit the brakes that time. <laughs> I backed out of it that time round. I wasn't going to send it in quite that hard. Down to second gear, maybe a bit much. We're on to the final lap and we're over seven seconds clear. And this skyline has been brilliant. That felt really smooth through all of that. Out of the final corner we go, on to the power. Up over the crest. And that is another victory for the skyline. And more money in our back pocket. Same sort of prize pot here at just 3,000 credits a race win, but still, it adds back up. I think over the course of it, if you think about it, with the five race wins here and a prize car, we'll actually earn back the 15,000 whatever we spent on the Skyline, so it evens out. Next one is at Sukuba. This is going to be five laps, three laps at Apricot Hill and two at Suzuka. I think second gear around here is going to be a little bit short in some places. This might be a case of staying in third gear for a long, long time. Still can't get over the noise of the thing. It's brilliant. Actually, no, second gear is all right. It just spits out of the corner. Just fires itself down any sort of straight. Bit of a tap of the brakes here and there. On and off the throttle, around the outside, cutting back. Oh, that's delightful. Build up, build up, build up, build up. Get the run on whatever that thing is. I thought that was an Audi. Well, we're already into second place, out of the hairpin, and here comes the race lead. Look at it. Oh, it's just effortless. I know that, yes, we've picked a car with a lot more power than the others around us, but still, just the way it does it is just effortless. Like, you don't have to sort of... There's no catch to it at all. First lap down. And let's crack on with the rest, shall we? Sounds so good on the downshift. Now, this is one of the cars where you own one wanting to know how much you can get out of it. I imagine with everything added onto this car, you can probably get nearly 800 horsepower from it. Hopefully something ridiculous, because I really want to play with a car like this later on in the game. Like I've said, we will find a way at the end of the playthrough to get all of the cars in my garage, no matter how many there are, and do what I did at the end of the Gran Turismo 2 playthrough, where all the cars sort of go against each other in a hot lap sort of competition. But we will fully upgrade them all as best we can, just to see what is the best thing that you can sort of upgrade to that level. There might be a few episodes where we do it, because it'll take time. It's not just a case of jumping in the car and then driving the thing. It'll be a case of getting into it, upgrading it, then driving it. But well, it'll give some appreciation to every car in the garage. I may do them in order of power, as I did in the previous attempt at doing that sort of format. Not sure yet, it's gonna be a long time before we get there. Very, very long time before we get there. I think one of the cars just had a really big off then at the last corner. There was a really weird noise of it skipping across the gravel and one of the blue dots was off the track. I'm just having a bit of a Sunday drive here in my skyline. This is great. Okay, around the final corner. One more lap to go for me in this delightful machine, which is making all the right noises and doing all the right things. We have a considerable lead over the rest of the field. It's going to be about 19 seconds. Yeah, 21 and a half second lead. Well, this may not be the most entertaining episode in terms of racing. We're going to get a few of these as the playthrough goes on, though, you know that. But still, it's part and parcel of this playthrough. And as I've told you all before, I don't want a single race to not be documented here. Not going to do any racing behind the scenes unless I tell you beforehand, because let's not forget in the muscle car competition a few episodes ago when the game crashed, I had to go and do that off screen. But I did it in the exact same manner as I had done the first time, so I'm not going to cheat anything. I want to do this all legitimately. There's a legitimate win for the Skyline. Get in. Ha <laughs> ha. I love this car. 3,000 more. Thank you. And we move over to Apricot Hill, one of my favourite circuits in the game. It's a standing start, this one, but less A-spec points, so maybe even more of a walkover. Just listen to that. Apricot Hill reverse as well some cool cars in this race. Look at that. The old Galant. Wow. By turn one, we're already in second place. If 
feathering it on the brakes just because I don't know what it's going to do going downhill. Sorry, quite like those little MR2s. Quite funky, aren't they? I imagine they're quite good fun if you do them up and make them a bit spicy. Now, on the subject of what I just mentioned in that previous race there with, you know, doing up all the cars at the end of the game and sort of making sure that all of them are fully upgraded, obviously that's going to cost a lot of money. There are ways in this game of making money very quickly. There are certain races you can do where, as long as you've done all the other ones before that, you can unlock a prize car, sell it for like quarter of a million, and then do that again and again, just keep doing the race. It was the same in Gran Turismo 2. I think if you won the third race at Hawaii, I think it was in the 80s sports cars or something, you win a silhouette race car of a Nissan Skyline R30, and you could sell that for quarter of a million and just keep doing that basically or it's 125 grand or something I don't want to do that repeatedly I know it's there I don't want to I don't know what race it is or what car it is you win but I don't want to do that if I'm honest with you I want to go through the struggles of oh we've not got enough money for that I don't want to just breeze through it with a sort of unlimited money glitch let's say and I hope you appreciate that as well you know I don't want to cheat the system or do anything like that I want to do this with the grind that it was supposed to have in it been told for so long to play this game I want to make it at least a challenge like that but in response to that later on in the game if that's how we need to make money just for the sake of obviously doing up every single car for a sort of shootout at the end then that's how we'll do it we'll find a way to do something like that and there will be potentially a grind stream where in preparation for all that I just drive and drive and drive and earn loads of money and you guys can have a chat with me while I do it Otherwise, this is going well, isn't it? This is going very well. Whoa, overdid it a little bit there. And flick it that way. <laughs> Second gear on the power, up through the revs, bang. Third gear. Look at the speed now as we come downhill. Nearly 110 mile an hour in third. Across the start finish line at just over 120. Down to the same one, hard on the brakes. Holding those brakes for quite a bit there. 85 mile an hour around turn one. Tires are screaming for mercy. Love this chicane. A bit of correction this way and that way. Ooh, bit of understeer there. Bounced off the kerb. I was hoping that the kerb would sort of hook the car in into the right hand side, but it didn't quite work that way really do it there actually seems like that's not the way to go about it here at apricot hill down through the gears again smooth on the brakes if you can but it's hard to do so on a light brake pedal and back up the hill the car just feels so determined to do what you tell it it's really strange things to try and describe but it's different all the time it's like the car saying i know that i should understeer here but i don't want to like it feels like the car wants to do what you tell it it's really weird still it's definitely done what i've told it there and that's take a race victory that is another one in the books, and that leaves just one left at Suzuka. But you know what? You're going to have to wait for that. I'm going to do Suzuka in the next episode, but this skyline is going very, very well. I'm sure you'll agree. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one where we continue on in the Japanese 80s festival.